Okay, we're ready for you. Okay, great. Um, hello, good morning. I'm Dharma Ganeshan. I uh, work at Fraunhofer Center for Experimental Software Engineering uh, in in Maryland, uh, pretty close to uh, Garda, physically. Um, the title of our, um, our talk today is Model Based Testing of Massive Systems. We will focus on uh, how we apply model based testing on a, on a couple of uh, NASA systems. It's a joint work with Michael, Charles, and uh, Christo. So, one of the typical problems in NASA projects from our point of view. Um, when we come to projects, uh, work with them, and, and review the artifacts, we, we found that test cases are often done up manually. There is a tester, or a group of testers, they, they derive test cases from requirements, documents, or their understanding of the system. But it's mostly manual process. There are, in some projects, test execution enrollment is automated, meaning there are execution tools like JUnit, XUnit, CUnit, whatever unit uh, execution frameworks are used to, to run the test case. That's nice because um, it's, it's completely automated and it's uh, nightly build integration and next day morning they will know what that's failing for on. Um, over experience also shows there are uh, still cases where some behaviors are not covered. So what we call corner cases are exceptional cases, if you will. And the problem with the manual test case development process is that it's difficult to summarize uh, what was tested, really. We don't know. There are 100 test cases, J-unit test cases. We don't quite know what behaviors um, are being covered by those 100 test cases. So it's very technical detailed script-oriented description of behavior, we kind of lack a high-level view of uh, test cases, right? It's very technical. So only um, uh, programmers or engineers who, who can speak that language could, could understand the, 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 the scope of testing. Um, so the approach we are trying to pursue in this uh, project is that we try to ask, can we automate testing not only for test execution, but also test case generation. So that's why we have a test automation and the model based test generation and execution. It's a project um, funded by NASA PARP program, which is uh, uh, sponsoring our work. So I will explain all results from that project. Okay, so why are we doing this? Uh, I already touched upon a little bit, but there are some 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 more details. In many of the NASA systems are safety critical, mission critical, and the uh, motor box could lead to disasters like death or injuries or financial loss. Or a surprise. Um, from a management standpoint, software testing is expensive. Uh, when we talk to NASA projects, they say in some some critical projects, they may even spend the primary percentage of the development effort on, on testing. But so it's, it's very consuming, time consuming and effort consuming. Many NASA projects could benefit from test automation. Um, that's, uh, Kind of a hypothesis, and uh, what we have found out is that uh, regular testing is not simply enough. That you, even if it's done by very good uh, developers, testers, whatnot, uh, there are defects remaining that will remain undetected unless uh, we use more sophisticated approaches. So we claim that MBD can detect many of those defects. Of course, it's not going to detect all of those issues, but many of those, those issues. So, 
what are the projects we are applying model based testing? We are applying model based testing on NASA GenSec. As GenSec is a ground mission uh, product framework, because, uh, it supports a GenSec API in particular, is a software bus, meaning um, the components can, can interact indirectly using a, a, a broker, if you will. The broker is the software bus. The, the paradigm here is publish, subscribe. Components can publish messages and other components can subscribe to messages and they can, the, the software bus will route the messages. We, we did model based testing on that particular GenSec API. Um, it is also interesting to say that the GenSec API wraps several middleware technologies and it, and it has several programming languages. So, uh, component A can be implemented in Java, component B can be implemented in C, and, and the GenSec API will take care of uh, language differences automatically. So, so, the testing problem is phenomenal there because you want to make sure the GenSec API works correctly for whatever middleware configuration the user has uh, selected and whatever language the user wants to run the components. So what we did is to summarize uh, for that very briefly uh, is that uh, we, we model the core API, which is the software bus API. We generated repeatable test cases from the model. Uh, I'll explain the test in, 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 a, in a few minutes. Um, we found that the violations, uh, most of the violations are related to programming errors. Some of the violations are requirements issues. Some of them are modeling issues. The mo modeling can also have mistakes because uh, it's, a, it's also human activity. And uh, we deliver test cases to the team and the team runs the test cases and uh, also fix the issues if the test cases reveal any which was the case in our case. Right. So, more, moving on to the next system, there is a system called Core Flight Software, which is a flight software, in a sense, it's also having a software bus, but for flight systems. Uh, the focus there was not on the software bus module, but on the OS abstraction layer. The Core Flight Executive uh, software, in fact, the product line designed for reuse and it's being used by several NASA missions actually. I must also recall that GenSec is also used by several NASA missions and then outside NASA as well. Okay, um, in the core plate executing, there's a layer called OS abstraction layer. From the name, we can infer that it wraps different operating system functionality. It provides a common API for the missions uh, who are using the corporate executive can select what type of operating system they want to have. For example, they can say, I would like to run the software on VxWorks. Only the VxWorks module can be compiled and uh, the higher level layers are completely agnostic to that. So what are the testing questions in this context? Well, you want to make sure the OS abstraction layer works correctly and consistently, even if we change from one OS type to another OS type. So the, 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 the functionality of the OS abstraction layer is dealing with very low level things like file management, file IO, network related, very basic functionality, but still the core of the um, by software. We model the OS abstraction layer and we also generated test cases that are executable and uh, uh, not surprisingly there are some common case issues where the program um, there are programming errors. They, the, overall the software is very high quality, there were not many failures but the modeling effort leads to naturally some, some new issues.
one more project. It's a space NATO project. It's from Wave Fan. Uh, in this project, we wanted to apply model based testing. However, before we can move forward, we have to be able to handle the system's graphical user interface. The space network is, is a legacy system actually, um, implemented in, in, in AX window technologies. So many of the current test execution environments don't handle that kind of graphical interface. Uh, there is no data model, everything is uh, in a very low level detail. We, we can't uh, programmatically say go and click on this button, click on this menu and all those things. So we have to to overcome that challenge first. So in order to do that, we are working on uh, an image processing based technology which will allow us to programmatically interact with the graphical interface of such legacy systems. And uh, we developed, Charles is the person who, who, who leads that part. He developed a framework um, which is leveraging image processing technology for testing. Or in the future, you want to do model based testing on the space network. Currently, it's only uh, executing the test cases uh, using that image processing framework. Um, I just wanted to tell uh, the, the future work that's planned on this particular project as well. Okay. So, what is this model based testing? And, and I wanted to capture uh, some kind of a hello world program analogy for model based testing. So, so it's, it's Interesting to, to select a, a simple application like Hello World to demonstrate the, the concepts. So you, you may see on your screen uh, a little Hello World program with three buttons, say hello, say world clear. Um, what say hello does is when you press the say hello, it will say, uh, it will print out hello. Okay. If you say, if you press the say hello, uh, a bold button, it will print world. If you press the clear button, everything will be clear. That's the basic functionality of this little app. And uh, there are buttons for minimizing, maximizing, and closing the window. We are not modeling that for, for demonstration purpose. So what are the safe space for the, what are the elements we have to consider when you are modeling this particular application? Um, there's always the notion of start state, which is basically you're starting something, you're starting your app, essentially, and there is an exit state where you are getting out of the app. Okay. When the application is started, you should not see neither hello nor world, right? That's why there is a state which says hello equal to false, world equal to false. That's the expected state that the application should be according to the requirements of that little app. Once you are in that initial state, hello equal to false, world equal to false, keep pressing clear, the system should not change the state, that's why there's a loop. If you press the world from that state, only the world will appear and the hello won't appear. That's why um, this particular transition, we put up some this particular transition changes only the uh, old part and, re and the leaves the hello part activity. Right. Can you move closer to the phone again, Dharma? Excuse me? You, you moved too far away from the phone. We can barely hear you. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, sorry for that. Um, the, the hello world state machine shows what are the possible actions we could do with that little app and what how the state transition should happen. That's what we capture in this state machine. So what are the test cases can we generate from this? Well, so one test case is start the app, check whether the window is clear, then keep pressing clear several times, and then exit. Another test case is start the app, press the world, and then press hello, and then exit and so on. So there are a lot of test cases one can imagine from a state machine like this. The tool can do that work for us. Only the modeling part is done manually. Right. So what is the overall approach uh, for, for 
for making the test cases to run all the way from modeling. In, in a sense, it's analogous to the previous presenter's uh, sequence-based enumeration steps. We also use um, Jumble and the similar graph walking tools. So, so there's a lot of interesting overlap between our presentation. Um, we start with model, and then uh, we feed it to a more, uh, graph walker or jumble tool, which will flush out sort of test cases. They are at a very high level of abstraction because um, they are at the conceptual stage. It's not ready to run. We need some way to convert those test cases into concrete test cases that we could run. When I say concrete test cases, I mean something like test cases in JUnit or something like in, in XUnit or whatever. So there is a notion of um, mapping the concrete test cases into actual test cases by defining a mapping table. The mapping table is basically taking all the traits and the transitions that are in the model and uh, associate a concrete syntax for it. Like what does it mean by clicking a clear button on the on the state machine model? Well, it means uh, we, we have a window object, we would call the clear uh, method of an argument. So that's the kind of mapping we have to do. That's also manual step because um, it's difficult to automate that part. There are some, some interesting work going on, uh, but we, at this point it's, it's automatic. Uh, it's, it's not automatic. Once the model is developed and the mapping table is developed, the rest of the process is almost fully automatic. The, 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 the instantiator program will take the model in the abstract test case and the uh, uh, mapping table as input and generate concrete test cases which are ready to run once we compile. And then we run it against the system under test and get feedback whether pass fail. It's also interesting to note that when test case fails, doesn't really mean there is something wrong in the system under test. The, it could also possibly be possible that we made mistake in our modeling step. We made mistake in our conversion of abstract test cases into concrete test cases. So uh, uh, there is a mistake in the graph offer tool that we are using. So there, there are many opportunities. But again, the, the point here is that this effort will tell you there is something wrong somewhere. That, that's at least interesting to know. Okay. So I have to admit that um, we started with the most basic state machine versions, and then we realized that um, to add more and more capabilities like the data part, like the previous person mentioned, uh, data handling part is a challenge. I fully agree, and um, that's why we started uh, to look for um, more sophisticated approaches. And uh, um, we, we found something uh, from Microsoft that a tool called Spec Explorer, which, which handles um, Modern-based testing in a slightly different way. In, in in Spec Explorer, we don't develop state machines ourselves. We write model programs, which are C sharp kind of programs. Which um, so if you're a programmer, you, if you're comfortable with programming, uh, you may consider something like that to to create a state machine implicitly by writing the the expected behavior using C sharp programs. The tool will analyze the C-sharp program, uh, sort of program, and reverse architect a state machine from your model program. And then that state machine will be used to drive the test case generation part. So th this is pretty um, uh, neat because of the ability to configure the state space and uh, say I wanted to have a subset of the state space, then you can have much more control than you have in the, in the other version. The other version is good as long as the state space is small, and it, it's nice because it's also visualizable. But uh, uh, once it, you once you add more and more requirements, the uh, the state space management becomes a problem in 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 in, 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 in even in sequence based enumeration because there are a lot of sequences to enumerate and so on. Um, so we found very uh, interesting test set of test failures when we use this approach, and I will, I will explain to you in a in a, in a minute. So basically, advanced MBD is powerful for programmers, in my in my opinion, and the other one is for um, people who, who are 
comfortable in, in, in modeling but not in programming. But again, uh, let's keep in mind that there's a limit for the, the size of the state space you could model manually. So what are the current results? Uh, well, we are on end-to-end -end approach for test automation. Um, we, when I say end-to-end, -end, we can start from modeling and all the way, all the way to test case generation. And uh, when I say approach, I mean something um, we use uh, as a process that in NASA projects. It's more from an applied standpoint. The, the approach found specification errors, runtime errors, and we report those issues to the teams, and they, they review, review them and fix, fix them often. And uh, approach works well on different levels. You know, we could test it at the API level or at the graphical user interface level, and it is also easy to infuse uh, the different teams fix them. There are some, some discovered defects, for example, in, in a pop sub architecture, we got some extra messages when the system was running, uh, contradicting the model's prediction. Uh, there were missing messages when there were some unexpected failures due to some, some uh, frequent connect-disconnect uh, uh, path. And uh, we have also have defects detected in uh, another project in Open Oracle I mentioned earlier. A file system was running out of descriptors. Uh, uh, file descriptors. When a file system was deleted, uh, it was not resetting the descriptor table properly. So those are the kinds of issues one can um, look for in, in when they apply model-based testing. Actually, um, yeah, there were there were other issues I have in the table which was contradicting the model expectation in, in comparison to the uh, behavior of the actual system. All right. So these were like contracts in the return code. In, in the API documentation, the contract says the return code will be, say, success, but the real implementation will throw error or vice versa. So that's the kind of um, discrepancy uh, we could find using something like model-based testing. But there are some limitations. It's not all great. There are, of course, some limitations. Um, modeling requires specification of the system under test. That, that sounded like a hard thing to have, but uh, in our opinion, we start with whatever specification we have, do the modeling, ask more and more questions to the, to the team, clarify the specification, or even sometimes generate test cases, reasonable failures, and then you'll find many cases are pointing to specification issues. And then another problem with pursuing model-based testing, if you start doing modeling um, through state space, uh, of state machines, uh, developers are typically not used to modeling, and, and modeling requires a lot of thinking of abstraction. Otherwise, it, it, it's not possible to manage the, the size of the state space. And uh, one thing we found is that it's difficult to document the the contribution of each individual test case. When the test cases are generated automatically, we really don't know what scenarios uh, are we really testing. Even though we, you can embed the requirements by like into them. You really don't know the scenario, concrete scenario. Uh, it, this is a problem we found in 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 in, in um, state space modeling explicitly. Uh, also, to certain extent, in in uh, in uh, yeah, MVD using Spec Explorer, um, even though there's there's opportunity to control the scenarios you wanted to test. Um, some customers require document of each test case. That that's something we are working on. How to how do we document the contribution of each test case when, when especially coming out of model-based testing? Okay, so what is the ROI of this whole thing? I have some um, comments from a developer of a project. Um, the GenSec API, as I mentioned earlier, supports multiple programming languages. A new programming language was added uh, recently, c -sharp and .NET. So the testing question was, can we, uh, can we generate test cases for those uh, new languages without um, manually copy and paste the test cases and modify the syntax one after another? So in, the, in our case, we generated all the test cases um, automatically from the model. Only the mapping table has to be adjusted. And within one day or so, we could generate a lot of test cases uh, for, for covering a fair amount of behaviors uh, of the C-sharp implementation. Anyway, I'm getting close to the end. So, to sum up, uh, we are building a practical approach which helps NASA uh, in, in test automation. 
not only in test execution but also generating the tests automatically. And the approach is um, is uh, interesting because there's a visualization component to it, and um, it also demonstrated uh, several times we could find uh, 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 corner cases which were more or less missing in, in manual testing about. So that kind of summarizes my presentation. Thanks for your attention. Thanks, Dharma. Do we have any questions in the room for Dharma? Do we have any questions on the phone? Once again, if you have a question from the phone, please press star 1 and record your name. One moment. We do have one question coming in. One moment, please. Okay. okay. I have a question from Mary. Okay, go ahead, Mary. Hi. I uh, just a quick question, um, and this is just a small caveat of your presentation. You had mentioned the uh, legacy systems and your ability to interact and interface with them. In my field, some of them have become so problematic, we just almost end up standing them alone and then retiring them out. Um, how, how have those interactions been going for you guys? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, the Space Network has been really uh, the backbone of NASA's uh, communication like infrastructure. So uh, they, they are all actually modernizing, but uh, they're still using the, the, the legacy interfaces. So uh, there's a lot of uh, manual challenges for the guys to, to operate with that kind of legacy GUI. Um, the technology that we are pursuing is image processing technology. So we only need the screenshot, and then we have a machine learning kind of uh, infrastructure to to learn where is a button, where is a menu, and so on. So, so there, there has been good progress for the parts that we could test automatically uh, uh, using that kind of uh, technology. Uh, we haven't fully really finished everything, but uh, the, the current results appear to be promising. Okay, great, thank you. thank you. We have no further questions. Follow. Thank you, Marla. Any Last minute questions in the room? All right, that is great. So we'll be back at 10.30. Thanks, Dharma. Thank you.